Hello everybody, it's the old bear from the old bear's den of Bigfoot, and we kind of changed scenery on this one, we got a little fire going here, me and Mrs. Bear are out here in the woods, in the middle of the state forest, and we're out here camping, and we got a tiki torch going, and we got the fire going, and hopefully I can keep the fire going because it doesn't seem like it wants to burn very good. But we'll work with it. Anyways, uh, we have another account for you. And just a sec. Anyway, uh, got the fire going a little bit better. It's kind of a losing battle, but... That's what I was trying to do. Anyway, um, the guy that, the female Bigfoot that has affections for him, uh, got an account from his older brother, which is about 10 years older than him. And evidently the older brother used to go hunting with uh, without dogs and in South Carolina that's perfectly legal it's all well I mean it's fine and dandy I mean they harvest what they you know what they can with the hounds by the hounds pushing them towards them and he used to hunt the older brother used to hunt with uh, uh, shotgun and slugs and quite a few times in the early part of the season, he would go out and before the deer season came in, he would go out and scout around squirrel hunting. So he had his trusty 12 gauge with him and he was squirrel hunting through a, a, a thicket and it's... I mean, you're just as likely to get a squirrel in a thicket as you are anything else. And it looks like we got a little lightning bug. Don't want to take an appearance on the camera, which is fine. Um, anyway, he was hunting through the thicket, and he jumped something. He doesn't know what it is. He thought it was a big deer. Uh, anyway... He uh, got on the trail of this thing, and you can see where it just tore through the brush, uh, plowing little trees over, tearing up the ferns and all that stuff, and it made a big path. He said it wasn't a hard path to follow through the thicket, and then he got out to the edge of this uh, area that he was hunting, and it's all public land, and, and uh, you know the the uh, logging companies own it, and they let people hunt on it, no problem at all. So he got out to the edge, out of this uh, kind of like briars and brambles and little trees, little saplings, stuff like that. And when he got out to the edge of it. There's a big, long stretch of nothing but dirt, piled up trees, you know, treetops and everything else. And he knew he wouldn't find a squirrel in that, but he was following whatever took off out of there. And he got out there probably a little ways, and there's a big mud hole, probably 10 feet across, um, and he said right smack dab in the middle of it was this big old footprint. Now he said the footprint looked like a human's footprint, but mega sized was what he said. So... <clears throat> He, he's looking at this footprint and he puts his shotgun down and he's knelt down at the edge of this little 
puddle, well, it's a mud hole, and and there's no footprint there. There's no footprint before the mud hole, and there's one in the middle, and there's not one on the other side because it's hard ground. It's just clay that's sandy clay that's holding water. And it's it's got him puzzled. He doesn't know, you know, if it had been a man running through there, he probably would have seen him. Uh, he said, but this thing was super fast, and it made a lot of noise going through there, grunting, huffing, and puffing, and everything else. So he he kept on the trail of it best he could. He he'd find every once in a while big stick broken and be a parcel like toes or something on the other side of it. So he kept following it and it went across that big clearing and it went into the other side. Now when he got to the other side of the clearing, it's pretty open woods and this thing had evidently had stopped and hid behind a big oak tree. And he didn't know it. So he kept walking, kept following what little bit of sign that he could find, because he wanted to see if this was a deer. He figured it'd be a big buck. And, uh, well, he didn't find a buck. Well, he did in a, in a sense of the word. He found a male Bigfoot. Because this thing stepped out from behind that big oak, probably 15 feet in front of him. And just stepped right in the open. And he's standing there and he's looking at this thing and, and he doesn't know what it is. He's never seen anything like that before, never heard of it. But lo and behold, it's standing right here in front of him. And he said, I felt like a deer in the headlights, scared to death, knowing this thing's going to run over top of me. And this thing just kind of stands there and just kind of looks at him and is kind of rocking back and forth kind of quick. And it's, it's, it's grunting at him. And, and then it goes from grunting to growling and it starts baring its teeth. And he finally remembers that he's got a shotgun with him. He clicks the safety off and throws the gun up in the air and pulls the trigger. This thing stops and startles and and looks at him and starts growling at him again. And he shoots another shot in the air. Now he's got three left. But the thing of it is, the man ain't dumb enough He that he's not putting shells back in. He's sliding shells in the bottom and shooting them out of the top. So he, he, at this point, he just, well, it's either you or me, so let's get it over with. And, you know, he's, he's raining himself for, for this fight that he knows he's going to be in. And, and finally the thing just looks at him and kind of blows, turns completely around, puts his back to him, and walks away right through the open woods. And he watches him walk away probably 50, 60 yards through the open woods. And he's like, well, don't know what that was, but I know I'm leaving. So he gets he gets the, uh, the gumption to get the heck out of Dodge. And he gets the heck out of Dodge. He goes home. And he's married. He goes in and tells his wife what he saw. And she says, well, you've been drinking. You've been seeing things. You don't know what you're talking about. And he's like, no, woman, I haven't been drinking. I haven't been anywhere near drinking. You know I don't drink. And this thing was real. It was right there in front of me. And, and I don't know what it is. Well... This is the uh, 2000s when he sees it, and uh, he kind of asks around a few friends and some family, and he's 
he talks to his grandpa also like the the younger brother did and gets told in no uncertain terms that you need to leave them buggers alone if you follow them like that they might get mad and kill you so he sees he's seen a booger and this booger didn't want no fight but You know, it, it would have been a fight if that booger had wanted anything of him. Yeah, it could have probably took him. But, uh, yeah, he saw that, and it was probably 20 years after his grandpa saw one. And 20 years before his brother saw one that tried to molest him. But anyway, that's his account. That's the brother's account. We got two more to go. Now we're going to put these out probably on... I'll put one out either Sunday or Monday. Then I'll probably put one more out on Friday or Saturday. And then I'll probably put another one out the following Wednesday and then the other one probably Sunday. And then we'll go from there. We'll upload them all and have them all ready for you, and they'll be coming out. Hope you listen. And let me know what you think of this encounter. And we love y'all. Y'all have a uh, wonderfully blessed day or night, whichever it is. And we will see y'all later. Mrs. Bear, you got anything? Night, night. <laughs> She's ready for bed. Anyway, we'll talk to y'all later. Bye now.